We have some great conversations going on right now about the stamp. It's time for pencils down, and let's see how we did. So pencils down, and we're going to go through the warm-up. Number one, restriction or no restriction? No restriction. Why not? Number two, there is a restriction because what kind of function is this? Functional? Try again. Rational. Rational function. And again, by rational, we just mean that there is x present in the denominator. So what should I be paying attention to when I look at this? Just the denominator. Good. And we're going to take what's in the denominator and do what? Good job. So we have negative 2x squared plus 18 equals 0. What do I do? Yep. Divide by 2. Divide by negative 2. Make sure we leave x squared out of it. Just dividing by negative 2. I get x squared equals... 9. What's the inverse operation of squaring something? Square root. So we take the square root of both sides, and what do I get as an answer? Good job for remembering both answers. So my domain will be all real numbers, x not equal to plus or minus 3. We have to exclude both values. Oh, right. Number 3. There is a restriction. Why? Even root. What piece of this am I going to pay attention to? Yes, just, not a square root. This would be called a sixth root. Or in general, we can just say radical sign. So we pay attention to what's only under the radical. What am I going to do with that piece? Yes, greater than or equal to zero, and we'll solve this. Steps. Mm -hmm. Great. Now what? Multiply by 2. Let's make that a negative 2. Good job. What, I what remains on the left side? Just x. What's my s inequality sign? Why is it now less than or equal to? We multiplied by a negative. So remember, the inequality sign does have... Let me push this up a little bit. As soon as you multiply or divide by a negative, we have to remember the inequality sign will change directions. So I have x is less than or equal to... 8. So my answer for this one, I literally take this as my answer. All real numbers x less than or equal to 8. How about number 4? Is it linear? It's not linear. Can't be quadratic. The power is higher than 2. Anyone remember what these are called in general? Like we have quadratics, we have cubics, quartics. After that, what do we just call them in general? Starts with a P. Polynomial. Very good. No restriction. So it, make a note. These are called polynomials. Past. Past. Well, technically we could call this a quartic, but we'll just go polynomial. So all real numbers. How about number five? Very good. Very good. I see a fraction, but do we see any x value in the denominator? Nope. Because this has a power of what? What is this power? 1. What is this function, actually? Power, a degree 1 function is called what? Very good. Linear. For the, those of us who aren't seeing, check this out. Could I break this up to be 2 sevenths, <laughs> two sevenths x plus 10 sevenths? m x 
plus B. We see that? Very nice. All right, whoever has their stamp, 100% solo on their own, go ahead and bring it up. And we are going to go over our geometry question and then jump into some operation notes. Go ahead and just uh, grab it. Whoop, whoop. Awesome. You should be. Yes. No prob. Just make sure we remember that next time. Good. So start looking at what you got at the geometry question and what somebody else got. Let's chat. What do we do first? Malaysia? Very good. So what Malaysia is saying is to get this length right here, she added this plus this. Is that what you guys did? Yes. All right. So let's see. So I have x to the third plus 2x squared minus 9 plus... 4x to the third plus 6x minus 2. If I'm adding, do I need these parentheses? No. So we can rewrite without parentheses. Do I have any like terms here? Where? Good. The x to the third and the positive. Notice again how I am including the sign in my box. What is x to the third plus 4x to the third? Good. Any other like terms? Good. What are we going to do with this positive 2x squared and the plus 6x? Just bring it down. Yep. So plus 2x squared plus 6x. And then you said negative 9 and negative 2 is? That's as far as I can go. Very good. That's my answer for this section right here. How about this unknown length right here? Olivia? Um, I did x squared plus 7x minus 10, and I subtracted 12x minus 1 from that. Do you agree with that? I almost agree with that. What am I missing? No, I said, right? She said x squared plus 7x minus 10 minus 12x minus 1. Mm -hmm. what, what were you going to say? You're right. She's right. What did she say? Where should I have parentheses? If we don't have parentheses, it's not going to come out right because now what do we have to send in? Yes. So this is going to become x squared plus 7x minus 10 minus 12x plus 1. So addition, parentheses are irrelevant. Don't need them. But as soon as subtraction is involved, we have to have parentheses. So let's see, like terms here, um, positive 7x and a negative 12x. Yes? So I get x squared minus what? Good. And then a negative 10 and a positive 1. Minus 9. Very good. So this is a nice warm-up for function operations, which is our big objective for today. We're going to be working in our notebooks, so go ahead and take out some lined paper. Today's date at the top. The title of today's notes, Function Operations. Board notes. Today's date, Wednesday, 921. Function operations. Our first operation is addition. We can write addition as f plus g of x. 
f plus g of x is how we read that. This notation is equivalent to saying function f of x plus g of x, which is really what we did for that red piece of our geometry question. We added two functions together, two expressions together. Subtraction. Can be represented as f minus g of x which again can be broken up into f of x minus g of x, which is what we did in blue. That's what Olivia said she did to find that missing piece, what we did just did in blue. We subtracted two expressions. When we subtract, what do we have to make sure we use on the second expression? Parentheses, very good. Multiplication. would be f times g of x is one representation. And again, we can break that up to be f of x times g of x. And last but not least, division. We're going to take two functions and we're going to run them through all four operations. Why do we have to have this restriction? Right, and what, what did we establish we can't divide by? Zero, which is pi that it why is that? That's part of our definition. We ready to go? Okay. If you're missing just maybe just l this last one, look on with a neighbor, okay? Grab that last one. Let's practice. So given functions. f of x equals 2x squared minus x plus 4, and g of x equals 2x plus 5. Given functions, f of x equals 2x squared minus x plus 4, and g of x equals 2x plus 5. What am I going to write for my addition? What am I going to write? Cassidy? That's it. And just like we just practiced, what, what's left to do? Did I need parentheses for addition? No. If it 
good point though. So it's not a bad, let's have a good habit then of always starting with parentheses, but on my next line, am I going to need these parentheses? No. So we'll drop them on the second line. That would be a better habit. And now what do I do? Combine like terms. So you combine like terms, I'll combine like terms, and we'll compare. Remember to include the sign in your box. Let me know if we match. I'm so sorry. If you need to get a drink, go ahead. Are we good? Awesome. What's what's the domain of what we have here? What's the domain? Our real numbers. W what function is this? What's that called? What did we end up with? Quadratic. Very good. After addition comes subtraction. So let's do f of x minus g of x. Do parentheses matter here? Yes. So here's our setup. Look up when you're done. We'll compare. Because, good question, what does this negative represent? Not 1. Try again. Negative 1. Now up here, this positive represented a positive 1. When I multiply values by a positive 1, is that going to change anything? No, but if I multiply this by a negative 1, this turns from a, two, a positive 2x to what? Right. And also state the domain, please. Do we match? Pretty good? This is not too this is not too bad, right? We're just really practicing our algebra right now. Good? Okay. After subtraction comes, go for it. Definitely going to need some space for multiplication. So I'm actually going to continue that on the next slide. Can I change the screen? Yes. Good question. I, on the homework, it'll prompt you with what comes first. Get those arrows going. <coughs> I'll take you that far just to show you how to start. How many more terms do we need to send in? 
two more. So you take your time. Take your time, use your arrows, and then we'll compare. see people starting to wrap this up do we match and I did try to so the arrows and what came of those arrows the colors match so if one of something isn't mat isn't aligning with what's here go back and check that set of arrows so the key to multiplication is arrows keep helps you keeps track what kind of function is this it is a polynomial but this one actually does have a specific name highest power of 3 is called what? cubic good job and last but not least drum roll please division division is actually pretty cool because we actually don't have a lot of math involved more discussion about domain so f of x divided by g of x That's it. That's it. True. Have we talked about domain yet? No. So this is what I mean. For right now, division, you're just setting it up. Once we start getting back into factoring, we will simplify rational functions by factoring. But for right now, in terms of practicing our operations, we're just going to set it up. But to Malaysia's point, we're not done because what have we not discussed yet? You are experts on domain of rational functions get the domain. What do we pay attention to with a rational function and how do I get the domain?
set. Good shape. Fantastic. We have about 10 to 15 minutes left of class. I know that who's going on the the trip? Who's on who's out today on a trip? All right. Let's get let's pause here. We'll continue with composition tomorrow. Um, we'll use this last chunk of time to give you all a head start on your homework because I know you'll be gone for most of today. Okay? This will be up by 3 o'clock. Great job today.